What's happening guys? Kenny here again. And today I've got a bit of a different kind of video. Um, it's a lot like my other reviews, but it's kind of in between a uh, first impressions and a hype versus reality. So what we'll be talking about today is the Benchmade Ale. Um, I say Ale even though it's spelled uh, Aller in, in our kind of uh, in English language. Um, this is the 380, by the way, was the number um, designation. Um, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to uh, Zach from Zach Stuff. Uh, go check out his channel. He's you know really cool dude, and he puts out some really cool stuff. Uh, he actually supplied this to the Apex Pass Around group. Uh, this is not something supplied by a manufacturer or anything. So thanks Zach for getting this in everyone's hands and letting us all check it out. Uh, yeah, so like I said, this is the Benchmade Ale, uh, the 380. And the reason I say Ale is because it is a French maker, um, actually two. Uh, it's a team of two French makers. And their names are uh, Patrick Famine and uh, Eric Demon, Demon, Demon Giver. Yeah, Demon Giver is his name. And um, I hope they didn't butcher their names. Uh, and yeah, so I'll go ahead and get into the... Uh, the size and specs. Um, let me go ahead and put the specs on the page right here. Uh, I don't want to waste you guys' time by spewing off a bunch of specs, so I just do it this way. Hopefully that uh, works for you guys. And then I'll bring you right back, and we'll go ahead and do some size comparisons. Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and bring in the... Uh, I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah, the SOCOM Elite. We don't need to bring that in here. Uh, that was a joke. A uh, bad one, but... Anyways, uh, so moving on, uh, the pair of three, go ahead and put that guy up there. As you guys can see, this is a very small uh, knife slash uh, multi-tool. And we'll bring in the uh, Spyderco Chaparral. You guys can see how small this little guy is. Uh, these are half inch squares for those of you guys that haven't watched my videos and know this. Uh, so you guys can kind of see how big this knife is by those squares. I'll go ahead and bring in some bench mates. The bug out. And uh, yeah, in the middle of a process with this one. So that's why it's, still, it's got those uh, lines from the KME on it. Uh, there's some testing going on. So... Uh, yeah, and here's the Benchmade bug out. I mean, I'm sorry, Benchmade bug out and mini grip. This is the 20 CV version of the mini grip. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring in some real size comparisons here. This is the Spyderco Pinchinko, uh, Surge Pinchinko uh, dog tag. Uh, this is, I think these are discontinued now. And then the Kershaw, uh, gee, Cinder. Those are some uh, more like legit size comparisons, I feel like. Get an idea of, you know, this same type of tool. So, uh, moving on, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the aesthetics of this knife. Uh, aesthetically, I do um, think this knife looks a little weird, to be honest. Um, personally, I know clothes, they're kind of going for the dog tag look. Um, it's interesting. And most people that see this on my Instagram uh, feed and stuff are like, what is that or uh you know they're just making a funny comment because it's not my style guys uh just let me preface it with that it's, this is not my style and when i got this in the apex uh i'm new to the whole apex thing and they use a um an app where i'm not very tax uh, tech savvy so um i when i was looking at the the channel list um i thought this was actually the bench made aileron and the LA, uh, the Aller, because it looks like, I thought that was just short, and I thought the L, first L was an I. I, I, I feel pretty dumb with this, guys, but I actually thought I was getting the aileron, and then as time went on, I, I have so much stuff going on, too, I did it so quickly, uh, you know, got into this one, and when I went ahead and, and got the box, I opened it, and I looked at it, and it's the small blue box from Benchmade, and I'm going that's too small to be the aileron. And I knew I made a mistake then. And as soon as I opened it, I was like, oh yeah. So I wasn't expecting it. And it actually threw, threw me a loop a little bit. Cause now I, I had to like 
uh, review something I would never have chose. And um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting look, guys. I know I kind of went on a tangent there, but it's an interesting look. And I'm not really into it personally, but it's got a cool, you know, got a cool look to it in some way, like that dog tag. Um, I don't know. It's okay. But as far as fit and finish goes, uh, this is a carbon fiber, seems to be carbon fiber uh, glued to a G10 layer. And then, uh, then they mill everything after it's glued to the G10 layer. So it's a beautiful, uh, you know, fit between the layers. You don't see any of the gaps. That's beautifully done. And then as far as the fit of the backspacer here, or whatever you want to call this backspacer piece, uh, there are some, I can feel the transitions here for sure, but it's uh, relatively, eh, relatively flush there. Um, you can pretty much feel the transitions all over the place. Uh, this one's okay, relatively flush. But that's not amazing as far as that's concerned. Uh, you guys can see the pocket clips a little high right there, but that's more from use, I believe. Um, those These backspaces are kind of a nice touch visually with that blue anodized uh, aluminum, I'm assuming. Uh, kind of like a nice contrast touch with the black and blue. I do love those color combos, and it looks good. Um, and the carbon fiber weave does have a good look to it, although it's not anything special. Just a normal carbon fiber with some weird uh, striping. I don't know what that's from, if it's intentional or not. Not sure. You can see that kind of polish, different polish line there. Uh, as far as the milling's concerned, it's done fairly well. But still, not super crisp lines or anything. It's just, it's done okay, done well. You guys can see there, there's some wavering in the lines and everything, but it's, it's okay. Uh, the blue collars are a nice touch as well, kind of complementing everything. Uh, yeah, and then, um, you know, the fit of everything, this thing is centered. And, and uh, the blade finish is kind of nice. They've got a, a ground, like satin kind of surface up here, and then just stonewash primary on both sides does have the designer's maker mark right there. I think it's the dual designer's maker mark. This is a first production, uh, 225 or 1200. This is S30V, guys. Um, I'm kind of touching on that right here, sorry. Um, I'll come back to that in the blade. But yeah, so interesting choices there um, as far as uh, that goes, and I'll go into that next. But as far as finish goes, uh, everything's done decently. Uh, fit is okay. I wouldn't say it's great or good or anything. Uh, then moving along, I'm going to go into uh, this is the design, guys. Uh, the choices made, which um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm, this isn't my style. So it's hard for me to decide like this is a bad choice because it's not something I generally carry or something I desire. So it's hard for me to say for sure like, oh, that's a bad design. But there are some interesting design choices here like... I'm not sure what this is, you know, if that was going to be like, oh, in case you needed to use an ice pick or something. Um, I know it does make up the the bottle opener, but they kind of went a little extreme there. And why did they make a point? Um, it's not extremely sharp or anything. It is chamfered, uh, which, I, which, by the way, as far as that's concerned, uh, everything's chamfered pretty nicely on this. Uh, it's relatively sharp here, but not bad. Sorry, jumping back into the uh, finish a little bit. But yeah, uh, that's nicely done. And, um, but this is an interesting choice. Uh, it's kind of a point, and I'll talk about the carry a little more later. But yeah, it's an interesting choice to, in design. Uh, it is a friction folder, and that acts as the, the friction part of it, obviously, because uh, your hand goes on that and then stops it from coming back. But it, it's just when it's closed, it, it becomes kind of an eyesore in my opinion a little bit that also goes back into the aesthetics but it's an interesting design choice and for this to be a friction folder and such a small knife it, it it's an interesting choice okay and and this dip here as far as like it, it's an interesting spot to have the dip considering if you put your thumb there it kind of pushes the blade down interesting choice there and we'll go back onto that in ergonomics so i found myself kind of using it like this 
which doesn't seem like it works right or doing this but it doesn't seem like it was designed to be used like that it almost seems like that's where your finger wants to go so that was an interesting design choice um as well as this i don't know if that could be talked about in uh the finish but uh, that's an interesting choice to finish that like that um they did do some type of sharpening choil if that's what you can call it there I don't know if that's a chip or what. That just seems like an interesting choice to do that like that. Oh, that's where the stop. No, that's not the stop. Yeah, it's just a weird, weird. I I, th I think that goes to Benchmade's finish right there. But interesting way that ends out there. I think they just, it's supposed to be a sharpening choil, but when they did the angle, it's too extreme or something. I don't think that goes into the design of the knife. But it's just an, it's weird. It just doesn't seem to fit. This knife seems to be a jack of um, all trades, but a master of none, in a sense, where uh, the knife doesn't seem super functional, um, as far as that's concerned, and the screwdriver is just a, 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 a flathead, and it's kind of wide. Uh, that's a pry bar, but it doesn't, you can't really stick it under as that far, and like you can't get that very flat to the surface, so that doesn't really work unless you're going at something that's up high and you're prying it like that. So that's not a very good pry bar or chisel or anything. Um, and then this bottle opener is kind of an interesting bottle opener that's not very functional as well. Um, if you're opening a bottle that's got a flat into the bottle like that, it works okay. I'm not actually gonna open these beers, guys. It's kind of early here and I, uh, I'm not Steve. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so uh, that, you know, that could open it there. But if you have a bottle like this, uh, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. See that? There is no way to get that in there. Interesting design choice. And if you look at something like this, see that? This is made to be a bottle opener, and it actually is way more functional. And the, uh, the width of it. Um, in bottle openers, there's usually some width. Uh, for stability. I understand that this is using that part of the blade. I, I just don't really understand the choice, um, to be honest. And I know that in the video from Benchmade, they're like, oh, it's Benchmade's first bottle opener. Um, I wouldn't be proud of that, to be honest. Um, it's not a very good bottle opener. And it could have been designed much better. So anyways, I'm sorry. Um, I know this is kind of negative, in a sense. And I don't mean it to be. I'm just being honest and, uh, and what I find. So... Yeah, that's an interesting choice. And then um, we have the pocket clip, which uh, you guys can see there, pocket clip slash money clip. Um, and it can definitely be used as a money clip. And it's got this like, almost like a pressed ball, but it's not pressed. I think it's just, I'm not sure how they do that. If it's well, if it's like just part of the mold or something. But that's an interesting uh, way of attacking it. And it actually works fairly well for money. Um, money does go in there and it's held pretty well. You guys can see it's up a little high. I think that's just been bent and I, I don't, it kind of came to me like that, but I'm sure that's just from people's cards or whatever they put in there. Uh, these, this, I am like the last one probably to get this knife, uh, just cause I just joined the apex group, but I could flip this around and bend it back down and probably get it to, uh, touch, but it doesn't really bother me and it goes in and out very well. That ball does hold in your pocket very well, so it has good retention. Um, anyways, I'm getting into the clip now. But yeah, so just an interesting design. And then as you can see, this sticks up. So if you're putting a card, this is just one of those $100 voucher cards. Um, just going to show you what that does. Yeah. So that's an interesting choice there. And if they're going to do that, they should, probably should have countersunk that or your cards are gonna get all bent up. Um, and you can only fit like one or two cards in there anyways, especially if you have a bunch of cash. So just an interesting choice. And like I'm saying, it's just a jack of all trades and a master of none. So, and moving along, um, I'm gonna go into the action, which, uh, yeah. No. Um, and this also goes back into the design choice. Um, it actually works very well one-handed, and that's nice, but um, I'll show you this. We got another little uh, dog tag style. This uses a detent, guys. 
And this is actually very nice. It, it locks the blade in. So when it's hanging on your neck or in your pocket or whatever it is, it's not gonna just come out, you know, like if you drag it across your pocket. I mean, unless your finger sticks to it and you're pushing it up. But with something like this, it opens relatively easy if you just went to pull it out and that hit the side of your pocket. That could come out extremely easy. No detent at all. Um, they do use like some spring-loaded um, washer type things to keep a, a constant pressure on the blade. So that action feels nice and smooth. Very smooth. But there's nothing holding it there. So when it's in your pocket, it does open very easily. Um, you know, like even in the cinder, you have that detent from the, from the lock bar. So that, that's not going to close on you either. So it's just an interesting choice there. And yeah, I don't know, going back into the kind of the design choices a little bit. But yeah, that's, uh, it's interesting. And it just doesn't seem very practical in my eyes. Uh, it did open, you know, in my pocket at times. Uh, yeah, but as far as the blades concerned, guys, you know, uh, this blade is, it's an okay, like, shape. I don't like the shape. I think it looks kind of like a whale, like a blue whale or something. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't really understand it, but I get the, the functionality of it. It's kind of like a utility blade. So it's very, like, straight, you know, like that Warren Cliff straight, uh, edge. And it's very functional in cutting open boxes and stuff. I did find it, you know, in that way, very, um, the blade shape was very functional. Um, and the choice to be S30, uh, you shouldn't have to sharpen this too much, especially for what it's meant to be used for. Kind of like a, you know, cut open a box, cut open a letter, uh, it's just like really simple stuff. And it would probably last a long time just being stropped and then maybe sharpen it once, you know, twice a year, maybe. It, for what this is purpose for probably not going to be sharpening very much and you know might be why this is up into that $130 range for such a small knife being S30 with carbon fiber on both sides uh, the choices just brought it up into a level where I would not pay that kind of money probably for this type of knife and it, it, kind of getting into the conclusion there but sorry um, yeah for the blade shape it's 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 okay and um, performance wise this does seem to uh, perform pretty well for what it is and uh, relatively thin behind the edge too uh, stock thickness uh, is pretty thin as well which is fine it's it for what it is you don't want to go too thick with that stock thickness um, we'll go into I'll get bring out the calipers in a second but yeah so uh, the blade is is done decently um, I don't love the shape. I don't love um, the, the finish is nice. The this is awkward to me um, and very sharp, actually. It's just I know it's a guard, I guess, but it's just finished out weird. It's just a weird finish. It looks weird to me as well. So uh, yeah, moving along, I'm going to go ahead and bring out the calipers uh, and show you guys real quick. Go ahead and zero it out. Oh, geez. I'm getting a feel for these Apex reviews. So this one might be a little longer, guys. Sorry. I know a lot of guys that are in these Apex pass rounds. It's probably much shorter videos. Um, zeroed. All right. So 17 thousandths, which isn't like amazing, guys, but it's it's good. You know, it's not super thick. It's going to slice relatively well, especially with the stock thickness you're getting. Yep. Yeah, 17. I'm not going to try and get it better on camera. You guys saw it. So, yeah. Um, this thing is still very sharp, guys. I'll go ahead and bring a little paper to show you the apex. I haven't really used it much, just cutting a few boxes open and stuff like that. But this is still very sharp. Not like screaming or anything, but this is the factory edge. And a few, you know, a bunch of people have had it before me, so. Decent. So the S30 seems to be done pretty well, and Benchmade's been doing S30 forever, so they've got that down pretty good. And um, 
yeah, so the blade performance is, is pretty good. And, oh yeah, the stock thickness. Let me go ahead and, even though I put that in the um, specs. Yeah, 0 0.087, so 87 thousandths. That's pretty thin on that stock thickness. So, yeah, that's where it's going to slice pretty well and get through those. All that stuff you need, you're going to use it for pretty easily. And that friction folder will hold up okay because you're not going to be pulling back usually. But I'm not going to be using this as a hard use, obviously, guys. But it would stop, I guess, on your hand after a second. But, yeah, uh, blade's okay. Performance seems to be okay. Everything's okay. Uh, just an interesting, interesting choices there. Uh, as far as ergonomics, guys, there's not much to talk about here. Um, in a hammer grip, it's very small, maybe like three fingers. My hands are uh, three and three quarters wide, uh, four inches tall, uh, six and a six and a quarter from this point to this point, and it fits very well. The way they kind of, the way that shape kind of fits into your hand. For three fingers and this one kind of gets into that point and I don't notice anything bad about that and when you're pushing down obviously the blades not gonna come back down on you until you pull back which you shouldn't be doing anyways um, for the most part with a knife like this uh, you can do it with any other kind of locking knife but not with this kind of knife so yeah it worked good in that sense and um, um, in the saber grip again it, kind of an interesting choice there to have the thumb you know right there and friction yeah you kind of got to hold it like this to be functional um i found myself holding it like this and just doing it like real quick just cutting open packages or using it as a secondary cutting open packages uh, it worked well for that but yeah and then you kind of have these three fingers back here and this you know these two up here works well like that um Box opener is kind of what this, you know, reminds me of. So in saying that, uh, moving along from Ergos, because there's not much to talk about there, I'm going to talk about the carry. Um, and the way this carries is it very easily, guys. Obviously, this is very small. It fits pretty much perfectly in that uh, fifth pocket. And let me go ahead. I'm not seeing. You guys can't even see it right there. Getting a weird glare. But... Anyways, what I'm seeing here is uh, 1.8 ounces, 1.81 ounces. I don't know why that's not showing up on the screen, but I'm seeing it just fine. So 1.81 ounces, that's, that's really light, guys, but let's, let's put things into perspective here. Um, I'm going to put things into perspective by bringing out um, something else. You got 1.81 there, and you got 1.87 there. Yeah. I'm just gonna leave it at that. You guys just soak that up. But yeah, um, 1.81 is very light and it does carry very well in that fifth pocket. And this does have good retention for like going in and out of the pocket. The way this angles in, it does have good spring and everything. So yeah, Let's see if I got good spring, but it doesn't bounce back as much as you probably want it to. But yeah, uh, it's a little thick. But they want it to be to be a money clip and everything. So choices, guys, choices. Uh, yeah, and as, going in and out of the pocket with that ball goes in very easily, in and out. Good, uh, you know, good way to go in and out. And you got your ramp here, but that doesn't affect the ergonomics um, at all. That clip disappears. So it's nicely done in that sense. Um, and carry-wise, it works very well. And this knife carried well, but... Again, guys, choice options. Um, this, when you bend your, you know, when you're sitting down, this is a sharp point. If you were doing something and you fell and this thing, I mean, that's not nice, guys, jabbing into your leg. Again, choices, guys. This is all about choices with this knife, I feel like. Just interesting choices to me. Um, so it carried okay, guys, but I wasn't blown away either, you know. It, this should be something that's almost just not even there. And at 1.81, it's, it's, it's almost not there, but it's, it's a lot of weight for such a small thing. Um, and just the choices made with the, you know, handles and everything. It, it is what it is. But uh, guys, you might love this knife. Um, I'm just, I know it kind of sounds like I'm harping on it, but it's just, I, I just don't, I don't get it, guys. Uh, the lanyard tube or it, lanyard or this could also be like something you hang on your neck. But again, I wouldn't necessarily want that hanging on my neck. 
with that. Um, but you could also put this on your keys. Wouldn't really want this on my keys um, with that. So um, just choices. And then in conclusion, guys, uh, because I, I, this is already very long and on such a simple knife, I don't feel like it should have been this long. But it comes down to the design elements that I just don't understand. Uh, I think that's, it was hard for me to wrap my head around some of these things. And that's why this got so long. Uh, and in saying that, uh, obviously, I think you guys already know at this point that I'm probably not going to be buying one. Although, I will say if you guys are looking for stuff like this, like if you're into like little multi-tools that, um, you know, have that functional type of opening letters and yeah, I mean if that's what you use your knives for and that's what you generally use then this is perfectly fine um, but just be aware that you might open that at some point when you're not necessarily wanting to uh, if there was some kind of retention there you know just like a detent I think it would make it a lot better uh, I, I just don't understand that that choice right there but yeah um, yeah, and again, in conclusion, I don't, I feel bad, like, kind of harping on this knife a little more, but it just seems like a better idea to have some kind of detent on such a small blade like that, especially if you have something sticking out that can easily be engaged. Um, not going to be buying one, but I do, I am appreciative, and I, I like the idea of, like, getting to try it and check it out, and and know now that I'm not really personally interested in something like this. Although I can see where someone could make use and use this thing a lot as like a fifth pocket or, um, you know, that type of knife. So, or multi-tool, whatever you want to call it. As a uh, money clip, guys, not so much for me. Uh, when you do have the money, this is the one thing though. If, if it is a money clip for you, um, if you have a lot of money, don't, don't. Don't get this. Um, or if you're just going to use it for your cards, might eventually damage your cards. But when it is a money clip, you're not worried about that, really. So that's one other thing. When I used it as a money clip, I didn't have to worry about it opening necessarily. Um, that would be very rare for something to rub that way. But yeah, so uh, just another aspect. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm sorry it was so long. Um, I want to thank... I want to thank David and the whole Apex group again for letting me be part. And um, I hope I do you guys, you know, I hope I do the, the team justice. I hope I, I'm another uh, aspect, another, another voice in the group that's something different. So I hope that I fit into, a, into my uh, cog or whatever you want to say, you know, into the gear. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a great day. And... Um, thanks for all your, you know, support and subs and likes and everything. So have a great day, guys.